Hi there guys, this is Nikhil from Grady Tech and this is the part 2 of tips and tricks for Coolpad Note 3. So guys, if you haven't watched the part 1, I leave that link in the description area or else you can click the annotation that you can see now or you can click the Google cards. So guys, let's get started with this video. So guys, this is the these are the notifications. So this is the default view of the notification bar. Over here we have the shortcut for settings. And over here we have the battery status. If we select the battery, we'll go directly to the batteries menu. Over here we have the option to show the battery percentage. So we can see the battery percentage over here. So if I uncheck this box, we won't be able to see the battery percentage. So we would have to guess the battery currently available on the device. So make sure you enable this option. Next. Over here we have this charging mode, we have two modes, effective which is recommended and the common. So if you are using an original charger or a high output power bank or charger then use effective and if you are using someone else's charger then go with common. So by the way guys this device gets charged from 0 to 100 in just 2 hours which is really great. So guys in settings we have this first option that is related to SIM card management. As of now I have only one SIM card inserted in this device. So if there are two SIM cards inserted we can choose the default cellular data, default SIM card or network or default number to make calls and SMS. Next we have call settings. Over here some interesting things would be power key to end calls. This is the toggle. So whenever you want to end a call you can simply press the power button over here to end it. Next float bar on calls. So let me just show you how the interface looks when I get a call. So guys I am going to get a call right now. Let me just lock the device once. So this is like the normal default view. You just move that. So I can swipe right to answer the call or swipe left to cut the call or dismiss the call and swipe up to send a message immediately. And I don't need to do this from here, I can press and drag on any part of the screen and I get these options. So left it goes to mute, up it goes to disconnect and right SMS and down to answer the call. So that's very nice feature. Let me just show you what happens when I receive a call when I am doing something else. Like say when I am browsing the internet or say when I am in settings. Now I am going to get a card. This is the float bar calls. So if you want that you need to enable the float bar of calls here. So next thing we have this thing called as call end screen where it gives me information about my recent call. So if I want that I can enable this option. So we have other information related to calls over here. So do check them out. Next if we go to Wi-Fi, one important thing is the sleep policy. So there you have a menu button over here. Simply press that and select advanced. Now we have an option over here that says keep Wi-Fi on during sleep. So by default it is always set to always. So what happens is when your display is turned off, your Wi-Fi will be turned on. So if you want to save a little battery, make sure you set it to never. In that way when your display is turned off, your Wi-Fi will be turned off and you will save some battery life. Next if we go to the more section, we have default SMS app. So we can change the default SMS app from messaging to Textra or whatever you want. Next we have the option to create the portable hotspot. We can set up our portable hotspot, set, it up, set up a password and so on. Next we have cellular networks. Over here we can select the preferred network types. We have 4G, 3G or 2G or 3G, 2G or only 2G. So if you are getting any disturbance or if you are having no signal in your area, then I would suggest you to go with 2G. Usually happens when you're in the outskirts of the cities. So anyway, in the settings we have this home option which can be used to select the default home launcher. So as you can see, I have set it as TSF shell. So if I press home screen, I'll go to the TSF launcher. And if I want to go to the stock launcher, I need to select this launcher. And when I press home button, I'll go to the stock launcher. So there you have it. Next in the brightness and display settings we can change the sleep time. We can select the orientation to be portrait or auto rotate. We can change the font style and font sizes over here. We can even change the LED notification settings from here. 
so we get notified when we get missed calls or calls messages charging and low battery information going on next if you go to the sound and vibration section we can set volume levels for individual aspects of the phone such as for media that is music player and video player for alarm ring volume notification volume and system volume so we can choose to vibrate the device when we are getting a call so you need to enable that option next if you go to interrupts we have three types of interrupts so if you press the volume rocker once you get these three options that is none priority and all when you set the interrupt mode to all you'll get all alerts if you set it to priority you'll get alerts only when you get a call you won't be alerted when you get a message when you set it to none it's like silent mode so those are some important things if you go back we have this option that says other sounds so over here we can disable this vibration on touch so let me just enable that so i hope you can hear the sound that it makes it's the vibration or the haptic feedback isn't really that good on this device so i want to turn it off so i need to come to this place to turn that off so you have some other settings you need to check it out yourself next if you go to storage on the bottom we get this location information if you select that we can select the default storage location we can set it to either phone storage or sd card next we have the option to select app installation so if you set it as sd card all the new apps that you install will be installed on the sd card i would suggest you to set it to this option only when you're trying to install new games and don't install any abnormal applications like push bullet on the sd card because if you do that they won't work properly next this is the external sd card section if you want to unmount your sd card don't just remove it come to this location and select unmount sd card and press okay and it will be ejected and then you can remove it the same goes with your otg pen drive or otg cable don't just remove them first unmount them and then remove them Next we have something called a smart control which is very unique to this device as this comes with a fingerprint scanner. So firstly we have wake up gestures. This isn't actually related to that but see uh, we have some on screen gestures like double tap to wake. So now the device is turned off or locked. So there you have it double tap to wake. So apart from that you have some additional options like when you press when you draw C on the blank screen you can open the keypad. When you draw E, you can open the browser. You can draw W to open WhatsApp directly. So these are some gestures. And while we are at it, let me show you how to take a screenshot. To take a screenshot, you can simply press volume down and power button both at the same time. And press save. And you are saving the screenshot. Next, let's do the same. And let's select some area of it and save. And now only part of the screenshot will be saved. So apart from that you have this action and screen where we can enable the glove mode in which your touch screen will become very responsive. We have multi screen as I've just shown you earlier. Next we have three screenshots. So to take a screenshot I can also use three fingers like this. So there you have it. So let's go back. So coming to the apps. You have all these sections. The downloaded section is where you will see all the list of apps that you downloaded. On SD card is the place where you can see the apps that are installed on your SD card. The running is the section where you see all the list of apps currently running in the background and the free RAM. As you can see as of now I have 1.5 GB of free RAM and that's really great. Next these are all the apps that are currently installed on this device. Next we have options to create multiple users. Let's say if more than one person is using this device. You can have an owner and a guest so if you are the primary user you can be the user and if you are giving this phone to a kid or a friend for a few hours or a days then you can enable another profile next we have location settings so we have three different modes high accuracy battery saving and device only so if you set it to battery saving it will definitely help you conserve some battery and one important place is this lock chain security so you can choose lock screen and enter a password or set a password for your phone. So to use the fingerprint lock you need to set a default password. So it can be either a pattern or a pin. As you've already seen I have set up a pin. So once you have set up a password or a lock screen or a screen lock you can have something called a smart lock. So using smart lock you can use your face 
to unlock the device automatically or you can have on body detection that is once you unlock your device and as long as you hold your device in your hand or as long as the device is with you whether it is in your pocket or anywhere the device will be unlocked so once you put your device on a table or anywhere flat or somewhere where you don't move for say 2 to 5 minutes then the device will be locked and next we have something called as trusted places so we can set a trusted place like this it gives me the exact gps location of where i am and if i set it as my trusted place as long as i am in this place the device will be unlocked and when i move away from this place the device will be automatically locked next we have something called as fingerprint management which is same as the fingerprint app that i've just shown you earlier so as of now the fingerprint is disabled so there we have it we can add or remove fingerprints from here next we have this unknown sources option if it is checked we can install apps using apks and if it is not checked we can install apps only from the play store next we have something called as screen pinning by default it will be off but i have set it to on so let me just show you how the screen pinning works let's say i give this phone to a friend to make a call so i don't want him to do anything apart from making a call so what i'll do is go to recent and there is this pin button over here just i'll press that and the screen will be pinned that means no matter what he does he cannot move out of this application say i'm pressing the home button and i am not able to go to the home screen to unpin this app all i need to do is press and hold the recent button so now it's unpinned so let's go out and check out other things well this screen pinning is really helpful if you give your phone to your kid to play games or if you are giving your phone to some elderly people to browse the internet or to watch some video or browse through amazon or some or such e-commerce websites so they won't do something and get out of that app so it's a really nice feature next we we go to the about phone and if you press this android version we can see this lollipop symbol and for some reason there's no hidden game over here next if we press the build number 7 times the developer options will be enabled so once the developer options are enabled you can see the developer options in the settings so in the developer options you can enable usb debugging just select that and press okay and the usb debugging will be enabled next if you can see it carefully there is a bubble following me around so to have that feature you need to enable this option that says show touches next we have something called as transition speeds over here so over here we have windows animation scales transition animation scales and animation duration scales by changing these values we can make the device look faster or slower so if i turn off all these animations everything will look blazing fast anyway in the about phone we can go to status and check your basic information like your ip address battery level mac address serial number and so on if you go into configuration information we can check out the device name model number cpu name cpu information the ram internal memory and the resolution of the screen so that's pretty much it guys thanks for watching this video i hope you have watched the part 1 before watching this there are a lot of stuff even in that video so do check it out once again the link is in the description area if you would like to check it out so if you found this video to be helpful give me a thumbs up and share it with your friends and if you have any comments do let me know by commenting below this video and subscribe to my channel to see more videos just like this